Okay, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Um, great to see so many people here already. Uh, and I'm sure the numbers are going to go up over the next few minutes. Um, this, as you know, is the latest in our series of um, webinars for teachers all over Middle East and North Africa. Um, we have a, a few people, I'm sure, from um, beyond that region uh, who are, as you've just heard, the meeting is, the webinar is being recorded, um, partly for the benefit of people who can't make it today, but it also means that you'll have a chance to um, have a look at the recording. Uh, we will send out a link for that uh, and you'll be able to recapture any details that you you may miss um, over the next hour or so. So we're really pleased to welcome Russell Stannard, who's our speaker today, our presenter. Um, if you've had any anything to do with um, technology and language teaching and learning, I'm sure Russell's is a name you will have come across before. Um, he's the originator and um, uh, manager of uh, a really uh, rich resource online called teachertrainingvideos.com. Um, and he also runs the uh, technology assisted language learning module of the master's program run by Nile in Norwich with the University of Chichester. Um, Russell has promised that this afternoon is going to be extremely hands-on and super practical. Um, so lots of resources, um, lots of practical activities. The title of the webinar, as you know, is Methodologies, Tools and Resources for Blended and Flipped Learning. Um, but he, he's also um, dropped a hint already um, that there's going to be some reference to AI, which I know is something that many people are interested in. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Russell. We will be stopping from time to time to pick up questions. If you have questions, please, please put them in the Q&A window and not in the chat. We'll lose them in the chat, um, but I'll keep an eye on the Q&A window and collect any questions that come up as Russell is um, presenting. Just a quick word um, before Russell begins, people asking already about um, a certificate. There will be information posted in the chat box during the webinar. Um, it'll, we'll probably post it several times because when you enter a Zoom event, you only see the messages that, that are posted from that moment on. You don't see anything that was posted while you were um, still waiting to get in. So we'll repeat that information several times and again at the end. So please don't be concerned about that. Certificates will be available. Um, and I'll also say something at the end um, about the opportunity that you have to submit um, a short written assignment. Um, but don't worry about that now. We'll go ahead with um, Russell's presentation. Over to you, Russell. Okay, Alan, lovely. Thank you very much for inviting me along. Lovely to see so many people uh, in the session. So a big thanks to uh, everyone for coming along. We've got a huge number of people, 178 people according to my um, screen. Just before I start, I'm just going to do a quick question. And all I need you to do is for each of these, just write yes or no. OK, this is going to be a really hands on session today, but I just want to get a little feeling of who I'm dealing with. So the first question I'm going to answer, ask is actually about me. So I run a, a website. It's actually quite popular. I have 70 or thousand people on my YouTube channel. I make videos to help teachers use technology. Can you just write, and I'm not expecting many of you to know me, but if you do already know of my work, can you write yes? And if you don't know of my work, can you write no? I just want to see how many people I see. Some people have already said yes. So, ah, I'm actually surprised. There's more of you than I thought. 
<laughs> you don't have to be sorry if you don't know my website. There's plenty of websites out there, but obviously I make videos specifically about technology for language teaching. Okay, lovely. All right, lovely, good. Okay, great. So at least some people already know me. I can see that there's a few of you. I do do a lot of work in the BC MENA area, and and, and uh, I do know that um, my website is very popular uh, in that region. So, okay, second question. Second question, guys, before we get going. How many of you have used ChatGPT? How many of you have played around with ChatGPT? Not in your teaching, just played around with it. Just say yes or no. Okay, lots of people, seems like a lot of people. Okay, right, okay, good, good, good. Okay, right, interesting, right. So lots of people, I'm gonna, gonna show you a couple of things about ChatGPT today and some other AI technologies as well. Okay, now, next question is gonna be an interesting one. What, just again, this is just to really help me guys, all right, because there's so many technologies I can show you, so many things I can do. I've got a whole session planned for you today. But I do need to get a bit of a feeling for the audience, right? Lovely. Okay, good to see so many people have used ChatGPT. I'm going to surprise you today when I show you a few things that you can do with ChatGPT that you might not have realized. Last question, guys, you're doing really well. Next question. If I was to ask you what you think is the most useful technology for language learners, so I'm not talking generally about using technology in education, but specifically for language learners, would you have a technology that you would say, oh, yeah, that is a great app for language learners? So ChatGPT might be it. So, all right, I'm seeing a couple of things coming onto the screen now. Do you have a one that you like? So put some, some of you are saying AI, but that's very general. Do you have any specific technology you say, yeah, that's a really good one, like Canvas, some of Google Slides, so Flip Glip Grid is an example. Go on, carry on. I know, I know all these technologies, videos generally, ChatGPT. Okay, the Cambridge website, Magic School, someone knows that already. Good, interesting. All right. Padlet, I'm a big fan. Good, Word Wars in there. Duolingo, YouTube, brilliant. Ed Model, Ed Models now doesn't actually work anymore. It's closed down. Quizzes, nice to see that. I'm a big fan of quizzes. Okay, Canva. All right, lots coming in. Okay. Oh, look at that. Good. So you've got lots of people knowing different technologies here. All of the ones that have come up on the screen so far, I know. I've not been shocked. Kahoot is an obvious one. Miro, Canva, Quizzes, Pinterest. Well done, guys. Twinkle. Ah, I don't know that one. I'm going to write it down. Twinkle. I don't know that. I'll have a little look at that one. Right. Okay, guys, let's start then. Brilliant. Okay, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Lovely. Well done. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Probably the fastest growing technology at the moment on the internet would probably be in specifically for language learning, I would say would probably be specific technology for language learning. Um, British Council's a website of information, absolutely brilliant, but the specific technology would be WordWall. And I'm going to start with WordWall. I'm going to play a little game with WordWall, okay? I'm going to start with something really easy. And then afterwards, we're going to do, we're going to, I'm going to start to show you, WordWall is a lot of fun. And I'm going to start by just having a bit of fun. And then we're going to get into a little bit of methodology and talk about it. But let's start with this technology. So guys, I'm going to start by doing a quick presentation to you, Okay and just tell you a few things about me, okay? So this is listening test. So my name is Russell Stannard. Uh, I first started teaching in Greece. My first teaching job was in Greece. I then went to Spain and I was the director of studies of International House in Spain. I also wrote some photocopyable materials in books. I never, I never wrote a book, but I, I, I contributed to several books. And then I returned to UK in 1999. I did a master's degree in technology. And then I combined my knowledge of technology and my knowledge of, um, of language learning. I am more interested these days in way in language learning than I am in language teaching. Um, I'm currently learning Polish. I live in Poland because my wife is Polish. So I'm studying Polish, but I also speak French and Spanish, particularly Spanish. I used to be a French teacher. Now, one different thing about me as well outside of that is that I play the guitar and sing. And I am a Chelsea supporter. And I hope there's a couple of Chelsea supporters in the room as well. OK, and I used to be a season ticket holder at Chelsea. OK, now what we're going to do now, guys, is with that information, we're going to play again. Arsenal. Someone said they're an Arsenal supporter. Oh, dear. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, right. Nearly give me a heart attack there. Okay, <laughs> Liverpool. Okay, right, lovely. So let's play a quick activity based on that. Now watch this. I'm going to just show you how brilliant this technology is for starters. We're just starting with a bit of fun, okay, before we... So I'm just starting with this technology because I want to start with a little bit of fun and then we're going to come in and look at some other technologies. I'm just going to move that down and I'm going to get rid of that off the screen. I'm going to open up this technology here, okay, called WordWall. And I'm going to log in to my WordWall account, okay? So we're going to sign into my WordWall account. And I'm going to just show you a little bit about WordWall. Now, why, do, why am I starting with WordWall? Well, because it's such a fun, easy, effective technology. One of the fastest growing technologies in, in terms of language learning. How do I know that? Well, I actually work for some of these companies, but if I go, not, not full-time, but I do consultancy work for them, but if I go to the front page of WordWall, I can even see that at this moment in time, there are 66 million 957,665, 66, 67, 68 resources available. This website is continually being used. It's specifically made for language learning or, or for languages generally. And what is lovely about it, if I clicked on create activity, guys, look at this number of activities. Unbelievable. One technology can do this. Now, you can use this technology for free, guys. You can sign up and make up to five games for free. And then you can edit and use those games again and again and again and again and again. You're not limited to only using those games once. You can go in and change the content of the game and play the game again with a different class. Now, I'm going to just show you a little taster of how powerful this technology is. OK, and we're going to do for starters. We're going to do more interesting activities in a minute. We're going to start with unjumble. And I'm just going to go watch this. OK, so you've just listened to a little. I'm just going to put about Russell. OK, let me just check on a couple of things. Just going to click on new share. Make sure I'm sharing the screen and make sure I'm sharing the sound. OK, so I've just written at the time. I'm just making the activity. OK, Russell is learning Polish. OK, that's one thing I told you about my, my about me is that Russell is learning Polish. OK, next sentence about me that I'm going to tell you is. I said was he lived in Spain, okay? He lived in Spain. Very simple sentences. I'll do a couple slightly more difficult ones, yeah? He is a big fan of Chelsea, okay? I could finish that sentence by saying the greatest team in the world, but I'll keep it simple just for, the, just for, for this example, okay? And we'll do, we'll do one more sentence. He, we'll do a slightly longer sentence, has been a teacher since 1987 1987 he's been a teacher since 1987 okay so i'm going to click on done as well so we've now got these sentences now let me show you quickly how this game works you saw how quickly i made this game now look, look how the game works i'm going to click here and you have to unjumble these sentences russell is learning Polish. First one done, okay? Look how quickly I made that. So this is brilliant for teaching grammar, teaching syntax. You've told st students a story. You've given them a series of sentences. They've read an article, they've watched a video, and now they've got to remake the sentences. So I've created that activity. How do I get you to do this? Well, I click on set assignment. And when I click on set assignment, all I need to do, and I'm going to ask you to enter your name, is to click on start. Now I can. I've got two ways of doing this. If you want to do this on your on your phones, if you want to grab your telephone and play this with your phone, you can. I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to share it in the chat window, and you'll be able to play this game. Or you, I will also open up the QR code. If you've got your telephone there, if I just click here for a minute, if you point your camera at the screen now, if you your telephone and you turn the camera on, you can access that game immediately and just quickly play it, okay? But it's probably going to be easier, and then I'll just stop sharing just for a minute, and I'll come back and share this again, if I just share the link in the chat window, and you just click on that link, 
and you can play the game. I'm going to give you just two minutes. Now, you saw me make that game in front of your eyes instantly in a few seconds, okay? Now, the power of that activity, of course, is the fact that not, I can make it so quickly. It's a great syntax game because you've got to put the words in the correct order. You can make these games really quickly. And of course, the grammar can be simple or difficult. I could have made really difficult sentence like if he had had more time, he would have lived in China as well. If I could have written really, really long sentences or I can do simple sentences. Now, the key and I'll be talking about this is how I would connect this activity into a lesson. I might have used this after doing a speak after, for example, listening to a audio or reading an article or uh, listening to a presentation. And then I might get you to remake sentences about me or about something else. So we can do these activities really, really, really quick, okay? Remember, Word Wall has 36 games, 36 games, and they all work so quickly, okay? And I'm gonna show you a few of these activities so you can just see how powerful they are. It's just a bit of, fun to start with, but then we're going to think a little bit more about the principles that we need to think about when we're using these technologies with our students, okay? So hopefully some of you have played that game. I'm going to give you a, a couple more minutes left. If you have done that activity already, can you write yes in the chat window so that I know that you've finished? And I will quickly just share the QR code again onto the screen, just in case anybody ha wants to quickly just literally point your camera at the screen and you should be able to log in and to do that activity, okay? Now, remember, Word Wall, you can sign up and you can use up to five games for free and you can then go in and edit those games and use them again. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Now, the other thing about Word Wall, and I'm not a salesperson for Word Wall or anything like that. I have done consultancy work for them, but I don't work for them in any way or make any money from them or have any associations with them. Just to make it clear, it is actually very cheap. OK, it's not an expensive technology if you decided you wanted to buy into it. It's one of the best value products on the market. Obviously, the reason is as well is why they've done so well is because they do price it very reasonably. OK, so let's just have a quick look. And I'm hoping that some of you I'm going to stop sharing. And look, I can see lots of you have been. Um, OK. Um, Well, um, OK, look, look, leave the questions till later. So let's just have a quick look a minute at, at the results. OK, so when you do an activity that I can see um, that hopefully remember, if you've got questions, put them in the Q&A for Alan. We can deal with them at the right time. I'm just going to open up that word wall now. And I just want to show you some things about it. First of all, I can immediately access the results. I can click here. And I can already see only actually so far, only eight of you have done that activity. So I'm going to stop here in a minute and just give people a little bit more time. I'm going to paste in the link again into the chat window. Please, could you do that activity? Just click on it and try to do the activity. Just going to give you a couple more minutes to do that activity. All right. We're going to try some more. OK, so you shouldn't need to. You don't have to log in with your phones. You can just click on the link on the on the on the chat window. I was just giving you that option. You just click on the link on the chat window and you can do the game straight away. If you click on the link in the chat window, you'll be able to do the game or you can you can use your telephones. You can do it either way. OK, OK. The link is already in the chat window. I keep putting it into the chat window. There it is. Hosts and panelists. Oh, hang on a minute. Sorry. Ah, sorry, it's me. Apologies, everyone. I had the right chat. Link is in the chat window. Terrible start, guys. My fault. Here it is. Sorry, yeah. When I was sharing the link, sorry, it was going to only to the panelists and the hosts. Apologies. Sorry, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> See, I don't know anything about technology, yeah? Terrible. Right, now, quick, quickly, click on, on that link and do that activity. Apologies, everybody. Apologies for that, okay? I'm pa pasting it in there now, all right? And then when you finish, can you click on done? It's very apologies, yeah? <laughs> Good, lovely. Okay, brilliant. So anyway, wh while you're doing that, I'm just talking in the background. What is so powerful about Word is just how fast you can make these activities. You literally just write in the thing. It makes the game. It generates the game, and you've got 30-odd games to generate. You literally just write in the sentences, bang, 
it's done, okay? So it's super, super powerful, okay, in terms of that. And of course, you've got the option of either doing it on your phone or doing it, and you shouldn't have to log in. You should just be able to fire your, you know, take the picture on your telephone and the game will open up and then you can do the game, all right? You've got both options. We'll try a few more options in a minute. But as I said, one of the things about Word Wall is that it's just so much variety. If you're in the class and you want to make your lessons in the lesson a bit more active or you want to set an interesting activity for the students to do for homework, then this is a really nice technology and you've got one technology with 30 odd different games okay so i can see now and i'm really sorry for that mistake i made at the beginning i can see now that many many more of you are doing the activities okay let's have a quick look now okay because there's lots of things i want to show you with this technology all right and as i said i want to make the play i'm not a salesman for word will win any way at all i just it, i just happen to know that it really is one of the fastest growing technologies specifically for language learning around okay let's go back well done guys so i can see lovely um thank you for keep writing into the window that you've done the activity so i'm going to jump back let's just see now if that works better so if i click now on the results so if i refresh the results so if you notice, I can click on the results. It gives me a hundred of you have done it now. Bravo. OK, brilliant. All right. So very quickly, I can just click here now and see the results and see how people are getting on and who finished the fastest, how many correct answers, how many incorrect. I get all the data really quickly. Look at that. Amazing. OK, so it really helps you to track. Oh, are the students understanding me? Is everything clear? Now, I want to do another activity with you guys. I'll make sure this time that I share the link to the right people. Again, I want to show you how easy peasy lemon squeezy and fun this technology can be. Watch this. I'm going to jump over. Let me just make sure again it was sharing the right screen so everything is clear to you. Lovely. OK, right. we're going to jump over and I'm just going to quickly open up just to save time. I'm going to really quickly open up a little bit of a this is a this is basically my this is like basically any information about my profile about my okay so i'm just going to grab this bit of tech this bit of text here all right just to show you again and remember this could be in another language okay it's not only limited to english so i've got this little bit of information here about me and the awards i won and all that i'm going to come back to word wall okay and i'm going to click again on create activity and this time the one that I'm going to do is missing word. So I click here. Watch this. OK, sorry again that this is about me, but it's just it's just easier if I grab some of my own text. And watch this is so fast. I'm going to paste that text in and now I'm going to make it into a gap fill activity. This could be any text from anywhere. OK, so we're going to say Russell Stannard is a multi warder winning educational technologist. We'll take that word out. So I'm going to click. I click on it. Then I click on add. Now it's made a gap. You'll see in a minute. He has more than 77,000 subscribers. I'll click there. So I'm going to click on that word and click on add. So that's two gaps now in the text. I'll just do a few more. OK, he received awards from the British Council. OK, so I click on council, the British Council, and I click on add. And we'll do one more um da, 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 da. let me just have a quick look let me just take that out that's it fine we'll just do one more here on technically okay so his focus is on the use of technology outside of the classroom okay i'm not a big fan of the use of technology in the class i like the technology outside of the class to extend the, le the lesson and to make our students learning more interesting i st still think in the class a good book good teacher Group work, pair work, lots of activities is just as effective as using technology in the classroom. So I don't make a lot of use of technology in the lesson. Right. We've just made four gaps. So it's nice and easy, very quick. OK, very quick. And I'm happy with that. And I'm going to click on done. And the game is ready. Let's quickly look at how the game's going to work. I'm going to click on it. And all you need to do is drag the right word into the gap now i only put in four gaps to make this easy peasy lemon squeezy okay so i want you to do this activity i'm going to click on set assignment i'm going to ask you for your name i'm going to click on start let's let's make it easy this time we won't use the telephone we're just going to do this game only through the link so i'm going to copy the link close the window stop sharing of course i'm going to make sure i'm sharing it to the right people i'm going to paste it in Go, guys, quickly do that activity.
Okay, so again, this could be lovely, <laughs> easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Love to see that, yeah? It's a, my phrase I always use. You know, again, let's, let, let's not think about this in isolation. Think about how you would use this in the lesson, yeah? You've given the students a text to read for homework or you've watched a video in the class and this is the activity that they do at home. So they go home and you've shared the link with them and they can do this for homework and it's obviously revising and reworking their language, okay? Super fast. You saw how quickly I made that exercise, okay? It literally took me a couple of minutes, okay? When you finish, guys, and I'll just share the link again, can you just say done? It was only four words. So I did make it easy peasy like a squeezy lemon so that you could do it really, really quickly, okay? Lovely, brilliant. Okay, great to see so many people. We've got 250 people in the room now. The number's going up. It's really nice to see we've got so many people, okay? So word wall, word wall. Why am I emphasizing it? Because it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's specifically made for teachers. It has 30 odd games. It can be used on the telephone. It can be used online. Okay, it really is a lovely technology. It has so many options. Now we're gonna do a couple more. We've got lots of technologies to show you today, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to have a bit of fun in a minute, okay? And as I said, it's free, only for five games. But remember, you can go in and edit the game and then use it again with a different group of students. So you can only make up to five games, but you can use them as many times as you want with different groups. And I'll show you that in a second just to make that absolutely clear okay what we're going to do now is we're going to start to push the level up a little bit and then we're going to take a step back and think a little bit about how this all works in reality okay nice thank you for all your participation i'm trying to make this as live session as possible okay all right so really really keep it fun rather than just me giving you lots of theory. I want you really to see these technologies in action. All right, guys, let's go back. All right, and let's just have have a quick look. So I'm gonna go back to our wonderful technology there to, to WordWall. And again, what I can do is, if I come up to my results, I can see now that 91 already of you have participated. And if I click there, it's gonna give me instant feedback. Look how, you must have been listening to me, guys, because look how many people got that right. There's hardly any mistakes at all. You're a really good class, but I can get a complete breakdown of, of who, which questions I might need to go back over, if anyone got any answers incorrect. So this can be really useful formative assessment information for me as a teacher. Is there something I need to reteach? Is there something I need to cover again, et cetera? So the results section is fantastic. Now, I want to come back to my activities, and I want to make this clear. Let's say I've only got five activities and now I, my free tool is not available to me. Remember, you can go back to any activity that you previously created and you can edit it and just change it. So remember we played that game about me. I could change this to something completely different and just write completely different sentences and then use it with another class. Change the title, change the content. You can only make five games but you can use those games again and again and again and again and again and again. And I could even use this in a different language. I could now maybe do an activity in Spanish. But as long as I use the same activity, it will be still part of my free option. OK, so don't think that you're limited. And for a long time with WordWall, that was the way I was using it. I had a free account and I was just using the free games. But then the WordWall company contacted me and said, oh, we've seen that your video on YouTube about WordWall has been played 10,000 times. We're going to give you a free account. So I now have a free account. But for a long time, I was just using WordWall for free. OK, now let's. Let's get a little bit interesting. Um, let's let's yeah. Let's just take up the level one. We're good. We got. We got. I've got to be aware of time. I haven't got masses of time with you guys, and there's so many things I want to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump over to ChatGPT now and quickly show you something else. Okay. So I'm going to click on the screen. I'm just going to jump over to ChatGPT. And I don't know if you realize this, guys, but you can actually talk to ChatGPT. You don't have to write to ChatGPT. I'm just going to show you how you can talk to ChatGPT, okay? And we'll see how good ChatGPT is at talking to me in English. Good, if you want to practice your English, ChatGPT is somewhere you can actually practice your English. So I've got a little app 
Okay, and I'm just gonna just gonna just check that ChatGPT can talk to me. Let's see if ChatGPT is listening to me. Um, ChatGPT, can you speak English? Is that okay? Yes, I can communicate in English. How may I assist you today? Um, can you speak to me in Shakespearean English? Because I want to practice my Shakespearean English. So can I kind of ask you questions as if you were Shakespeare and you answer me in Shakespearean English so that I can kind of practice language of the of the of the 15th, 14th century? Certainly. Pray, ask thy questions in the manner of yon Shakespearean tongue, and I shall endeavor to respond in like fashion. Speak, fair interlocutor, and let us engage in this discourse of the 15th and 16th century English. I've heard a rumor that you're thinking of building theater in London. Hark, the whispers hold truth, as the winds do carry tidings of such a venture. Indeed, the notion of erecting a theatre in fair London's bosom doth dance upon the stage of possibility. A venue to host the plays and dramas that doth stir the hearts of both commoner and noble alike. Pray, what say thee to such a prospect? Okay, so a lot of people don't realise that you can chat to GPT, chat GPT, and you can even tell chat GPT to be a certain person or to respond in a certain way. And this can be really, really a lot of fun. And you could even use this in the classroom with your students. But you can also, if you want chat GPT to do something, it's much quicker and much faster if you speak to chat GPT. For example, let's say that I want chat GPT to produce some example sentences of the use of a certain word, okay? Let's say, for example, ChatGPT, could you write me five sentences at level A2 using the word accommodation? Because I don't exactly understand what accommodation means. Could you write me five example sentences of the word accommodation being used in, in English? Certainly, I'd be delighted to help. Accommodation generally refers to a place to live or stay. Okay, so now the great thing is that I could now copy those words, right? Like these sentences, if I wanted. And if I wanted now, I could go back to Word Wall, couldn't I? I could go back to Word Wall and I could actually make those into a game. So I could click on my activities and think to myself, okay, what game am I going to create using those sentences? So if I click on Create Activity, for example, I might use those in missing word, like I just showed you before, or even try another of the game types here that I've got, okay? So you can really see how quick you can make use of ChatGPT to produce content for you, ask it to write a story for you, ask it to use certain verb tenses when it's writing a story, ask it to produce example sentences. Now I'm using ChatGPT all the time when I'm learning Polish, I get it to make stories for me, to write out example sentences and certain grammar points that I want to practice, etc. Okay, so there's lots of ways that we could use um, ChatGPT to produce content, but it's also really good for practicing language. I'm just going to stop sharing in the chat window. Can I just ask it for people, how many people knew that you can talk to ChatGPT? And also, please, you're not limited to speaking to just say yes or no in the chat window. If you already knew, if OK, OK, so quite a few of you knew, but some of you didn't know that you can actually speak to ChatGPT. OK, I'll quickly show you the app that I use to show you um, because it's great. And of course, you can speak to it in Arabic and ask it to produce you content in English. So you don't have to speak to it in English to get it to produce content in English. I speak to it in English and ask it to produce content in Polish for me, okay? So it's great if you want to get to write a story or to act in a certain way, et cetera, okay? I'm going to try to give you a few more um, examples of what I mean and uh, also show you the app that I use, okay? So let's just jump back. So really interestingly, um, okay? Lovely. I'm not, you know, please don't feel guilty if you're not aware that, that you, you know, you could speak to ChatGPT. It's, you know, it's still a very new technology and a lot of people don't realize that you can do this. So just going to come back and just show you a couple more things about speaking to ChatGPT. So let's just jump back here a minute and I'm just going to share that and then come back to this window. Let's just jump back again to ChatGPT. Okay. Now, 
I'm just going to click on new chat. I'm just going to show you that the app that I use and just show you the app that I use. OK, very easy, guys. If I go to my extensions, OK, manage extensions, you'll notice that I have an app on my Google Chrome. It's called Voice Control for ChatGPT. Now, if you want to add that to ChatGPT, just OK, just to show you how easy it is, literally only one thing you need to do. Go to Google, and in Google, just do voice control for ChatGPT, and it will come up first. Click on it, and just click. Now, you notice here on my one, it says remove from Chrome, because it, it knows already that, the, that I've already added the extension in. Your one's going to say add to Chrome. Just click on that button. That's it. That's all you have to do. Click on that button, just say yes, and it will add it to Google Pro. Then when you come back to ChatGPT, one thing you will need to do is to is to re, is to you know to um refresh your browser. And then suddenly you'll see that you've got this app. Now if you click here guys, look at this. Just to point out, there's not it, you can use lots of different languages, okay? So you're not limited in terms of the languages that um you can speak. Well, I for example, if I wanted to speak in Spanish, okay? I've just switched over to Spanish now. Let's just just check if it can do that. Um Chat GPT, me puedes hablar en español? No, no sé si tú hablas español. Sí, puedo hablar español. <coughs> ¿En qué puedo ayudarte hoy? Okay, so brilliant. You can switch over. So remember, you can kind of speak to Chat GPT in one language and tell it to produce content for you in another language, which is what I'm always doing. For example, if you just if I jump back to something that you can see here that Chat GPT is producing loads of content grammar, stories, all sorts of things for me in Polish, okay, which is really, really useful, okay, so that voice app is worth getting, number one for you, so really good for you in terms of your own language practice, but also really good if you um, want to, uh, if you want to produce material, so just as a quick example, let me just quickly go through an example. I'm just going to do a really fast example to show you the sorts of things that you could produce really quickly. I, I'm sorry, I've got it in the wrong language. I need to just switch it over back to English. Sorry. OK, so let's just go back in. there. Right, we're back in English now. So let me just refresh that, do a new chat. OK, one minute. Let me just refresh. OK, lovely. So right, I've got it set to English. Watch this. Can you write for me 10 words connected with the topic of football? I'm studying football in English, but I only know very basic vocabulary. Can you produce, produce for me a list of 10 words uh, around the topic of football? Certainly. Here are 10 words related to football. Goal, penalty, offside, dribble, tackle, header, pitch, referee, corner, kick, formation. Can you write the definitions of those words next to the word? Can you put it into a table in two columns with the word on the left and the definition on the right? Okay, so it's done it slightly wrong. Can you put that into just one table, but with in the left column the word and in the right column the definition? OK, so do you see the power of ChatGPT when you can speak to it? It's so easy to ask it to do things. Now, Certainly. Copy Here's those a single words. table with the words and their definitions. Word definition goal A point scored by getting the ball into the opponent's net penalty A kick awarded to the opposing team for a rule violation offside okay, A just... player positioned in the opponent's half when the ball is played to them. Except okay, let me just turn that. that off. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, okay, is that I've got that lovely table. And just to quickly demonstrate this, I'm just going to grab the first five, okay? Just going to show you something. I'm going to copy those, okay? Always check, make sure. And I could have told ChatGPT the level that I wanted. I didn't tell it, oh, A2 or B1. And it's not always good with the level. Sometimes you need to tell it to go back and do it again. But I'm going to jump back to WordWall now. And I'm going to do match. Watch this, guys. Just watch the, how fast this is. Match. OK, we're going to do the topic of football because we all know that I love Chelsea. We're going to paste in those words. Watch this one. I copied them. Remember, just one paste. Whoa, I've got the word on the left and on the right. I've got the definition all done. 
in seconds. I click on done. And now I'm going to set that as an assignment for you to do. Okay, so what I've done this time is I've combined using chat GPT with using WordWall to make an activity for myself. In seconds, I'm going to paste that in. That's going to be a little bit more challenging for you now. So we're combining chat GPT with WordWall. And I'm showing you how you can make, get chat GPT to make you a story or make you some sentences or make you some content. And then you can paste it straight into WordWall and make a game to play with your students. OK. Yeah. OK, brilliant. Lovely. Someone said that they've asked ChatGPT to um, make a game for them. And I can believe that. OK, you can really, really make um, lots and lots of material using ChatGPT. I am doing it all the time. I'm actually language mad. I speak, as I said, Spanish, French and Polish. I'm studying Polish. I still have Spanish lessons. And I get ChatGPT to make all sorts of things for me, stories, et cetera, et cetera. Guys, I'm hoping you're doing that activity and just pasting it back into the window. Just click on it and quickly do that activity. You've only got five words to do. It's all to do with the topic of football. I didn't limit the level. Remember, you could tell ChatGPT, you know, can you write me a story around the topic of football? Um, you know, keep the level at A2 and it will write the story for you. Yeah. Um, OK. OK, right. So hopefully you got a good when you've done that activity quickly. Can you just tell me? OK, OK. I just want you to see how powerful this stuff is. You really can generate a lot of content for yourself very, very quickly. And you, I mean, I'm just I'm, I'll show you very quickly in a minute because we, we need to move on to other technologies. But um, I want to um, I wanted to give you a bit of a taster. OK, and we haven't got much time and there's so many technologies that I'd love to show you. OK. <laughs> someone doesn't know very show how little i know about football okay no problem okay no problem if you don't know about football unfortunately i do and my wife's not very happy about it the fact that i know too much about football and i'm afraid i'm always watching chelsea on the television lovely guys thank you for the lovely comments that come in as well you're a really good fun group to work with really good okay absolutely fantastic all right so We've we've picked up on Word Wall and Chat GPT now, and I want to, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chelsea aren't doing very well, are they? Someone's just put the question in there. Lovely guys. So, okay, that that chat that that um, app is really useful. It's free, as I said. Yeah, Voice for Chat GPT. Voice for Chat GPT. Just go to Google, search for it, and then click on Add. And it, when you open up your uh, chat GPT, you'll see it's in there. Incidentally, I'm using the free tool. OK, guys. Right. Let's have a little bit more fun. Right. Let's let's actually talk a little bit before I've got lots of games to, to show you. Um, uh, but I just let's just have a quick talk about um, a little bit of theory. OK, because. Uh, you know, I, I think it's really important that we do put a little bit of a bit of understanding on this and we try and connect it a little bit to what what I'm trying to, you know, our, our theme, which is kind of blended learning. And um, OK, so I'm just going to come over to here and we're looking at sort of blended learning and flipped learning. OK, so I'm just going to quickly um, present this and I'm going to do a quick presentation. I'm just going to talk you through a few things. OK. Right. When, when we're blending our learning, what we're trying to do really, right, is that really fundamentally we're trying to mix the use of traditional language teaching methodology and, and ways of teaching, okay, but bringing technology into it, okay? And by combining these two in an interesting way, we're hoping that the results are going to be more than two. In other words, one plus one doesn't equal two, it equals a little bit more. In other words, that mixture of traditional classroom context and the use of technology, particularly for homework, okay, can result in really more interesting learning. Now, do I believe this is true? Well, to a little degree, yes, I do. I think if I think back about my own teaching learning, when I was teaching in 1987, in the 1990s, I couldn't really get my students to do that many interesting activities for homework. Now I can ask them to speak. I can ask them to record themselves speaking. I can ask them to write something. I can ask them to watch a video. I can ask them to do a word wall. I can ask them to work with ChatGPT. I can actually make the 
the homework more interesting. So if I can combine a nice lesson with the nice use of technology, then maybe I really can do it. I really can achieve this idea that one plus one actually equals more than two. The combination of using traditional teaching methods along with technology can result in a really effective lesson. Now, one thing to keep in mind about that is that I'm not necessarily suggesting that the use of technology in the class is where the secret is. Personally, in my point of view, and I think you're going to see in the next six months to a year, a massive, massive amount of research suggesting that the use of, for example, mobile phones in the class is not that effective. And that actually distracts students. And I believe you're, you're going to start to see that. I'm aware of some of the pieces of the research that are going to come out. But we can really power up the homework. So I'm when I'm talking a lot about the use of technology, I'm particularly talking about the plus, how we achieve that plus being in making the homework aspect of what we do more interesting. If you're the type of teacher that doesn't want to bring technology into the class and you're doing group work and pair work and you're making the lesson interesting, OK, you're probably going to play some videos in the class. I accept that. That's part of technology. But we aren't necessarily need to get our telephones out and use loads of technology in the lesson. Now, the key then is how we link the lesson together, how we link the lesson together. And what we know is that one of the most effective ways of thinking about that link was the flipped classroom. Now, I was really, really, really lucky. I had written a paper in 2007 about an idea which was similar to the flipped classroom. And the organization in America contacted me and said, oh, we've read your paper. This is really interesting. We have some people in America that are working on the flip classroom idea. I didn't know the term, the flip classroom. We'd like you to come out to America and come to a conference. And I become very connected with flip classroom, with the whole idea of the flip classroom. So in the flip classroom, it's a very good example of the use of technology. The idea is that we use the technology for the preparatory part or we watch a video at home, we read an article at home, we listen to a podcast at home in preparation for the lesson. This is the work of Aaron Sams and Jonathan Bergman. Now, they're not suggesting that this little bit of homework that we do is a big piece of work. No, it's going to be quite a small piece of work. It's going to be a video. It's going to be article. It's going to be something that the students can watch so that they can get the basic information. And normally, alongside that video or an article or a podcast or an audio or whatever you get the students to do for homework. So that's the beginning of the lesson is the homework. You normally give them something to check their understanding. Hence the reason I was showing you word wall. Word wall is really good for this understanding, remembering part. It's good at checking basic understanding. So I might say to my students, right, tonight you're going to watch a video about Jose Mourinho, the Chelsea football manager. It's a very short video of just three minutes. And then I want you to answer some questions. Now, when they come into the class, I might put them in groups to have a discussion about Jose Mourinho. What is good about him? What is bad about him? OK, so what I'm trying to do is that I'm using the homework part that where I am using technology to kind of prepare them for the lesson. Now, that homework doesn't have to be really big. It has to be something short, but it does need to check understanding. We can't just ask the students to watch a video or read an article. That's not enough. They need to read the article and do an activity to ferment their knowledge. That's what we're trying to do. So the flipped classroom is a form of blended learning. It's just a form of blended learning based on Bloom's taxonomy. That is doing the lower order thinking skills at home so that you can spend more time in the class doing the higher order thinking skills. And the reason that I like this picture is because this is what it is. If we can use the homework part of the lesson, the students watch a video, they read an article, they listen to an audio, and they do an activity to check and then we use that in the lesson. So we come in the lesson, we start straight away with a discussion, with an activity based on the homework. Then it's like as if the homework is the diving board for the actual lesson. It means that your students can come straight into, into the class and you can say, right, guys, you watched that video last night. I'm going to put you in the group. So I want you to discuss these questions.
Okay, so this is why the flip classroom becomes so popular, because it is a really good example of how we can connect the use of technology outside of the class with more traditional teaching in the classroom. You don't have to use technology in the class. You might want to use it. Sometimes I do. But I'm a big fan of keeping the technology most of the time outside of the class. There's plenty of good things we can do in the classroom with group work, with pair work, with photocopying materials, with great course books, with images. Yeah, we might use a bit of video. Yes, yeah, sometimes we might play a Kahoot. But generally, we don't need to be spending a lot of time use necessarily using technology in the class. For me, the technology is outside of the classroom. And this is really important, okay, that we can help our students, we can facilitate interesting things that we can get our students to do for homework. Now, I'm going to show you now, I'm just going to stop at this point and just take this idea a little bit further. Now, again, I'm going to emphasize, I'm suggesting that the most important role for technology is outside of the class. And over the next six months to a year, there will be more and more research coming out suggesting that the use of technology in the classroom, particularly mobile phones, can be detrimental. OK, so where I think technology is most powerful is outside of the class. Now, I'm going to try to show you a couple of really interesting examples using some AI technologies that are really going to open your eyes up to how you can help your students with this homework part of their lesson. OK. So let me just stop sharing there, and I'm going to show you something absolutely fabulous now. Okay, really going to find this technology. What for me? For me personally, uh, apart from ChatGPT, I think it's one of my favourite technologies in terms of how it's impacted on my own teaching and learning. Okay, so let me just so let me just um, come out of that presentation, and I'm going to jump over to this technology here, and I'm going to try to explain to you why I think this is incredible. Watch this, guys. This technology is called Natural Readers, and it can take any text, and it can have that text read out to you perfectly in a native-like voice, and it could be in any language, in many languages. Now, you can even use this technology completely for free for up to four thousand characters in a day. So, I'm going to click on Start for Free. And this is a perfect tool for your students because, for example, if they've got a text to read for homework in preparation for the lesson, and you say to them, look, you know, you don't only, you, you're going to read the text, but maybe what you might want to do is also listen to the text being read out. Now, to save myself time, because I've already got it open, let's, and I'm, I'm not doing this for any other reason, just to save time, let me just grab that bit of text here. I've got all right. I'm just going to show you what I mean. So I'm just going to copy here. I'm just going to come here and I'm going to copy that text. Okay, using the same text again, the same boring text about me. All right, but it's just it's going to save a lot of time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over. And I must admit, I must just I'm going to jump over to natural readers. And I'm going to just click here and I'm choosing English. Remember, there's loads of languages. I could even have Aust let, let's actually let's, let's, you're all, you're listening to my accent and I've got a boring English accent. Let, let's try, let's try another accent. Let's try an Australian English accent. All right. So we're going to choose William. I'm going to paste this text in. Now I'm going to click on this button and this text is going to be read out in Australian English. Now imagine being able to do this for your students to give them a piece of text and say, go home, read this text. I want you to understand it, but also listen to it. So you can read and listen at the same time. For me, this is one of the most powerful ways of learning a language. I do this all the time in Polish. Luckily, many languages that can be used for this. One of them is Polish. So let's just see how this works, okay? So I'm just going to click on this button here and watch this. Russell Stannard is a multi-award winning educational technologist and founder of www.teachertrainingvideos.com. He has more than 77,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. He received awards from the British Council Eltons, the Times Higher, and the University of Westminster for his work in the U. Now, this is an absolute revelation that I, you know, I used to set homework for my students at home, you know, read this blog post, read this article on the internet, but they couldn't listen to it. And now they can listen to the, the article as well. And of course, they can listen to all sorts of different accents. So they can say, well, actually, I don't want to have that read out in Australian English. I want it read out in Indian English. 
So I'm going to switch over now to Indian English. We can choose a voice. So we're going to go for, we'll go for the first one here, yeah? Nirja. And we're going to hear, hear Nirja reading out this article for me now in Indian English. He received awards from the British Council Eltons, the Times Higher and the University of Westminster for his work in the use of ICT in education. He trains language educators in the use of technology to end absolutely fantastic okay and what this is doing is doing two things it's facilitating and making the homework more interesting 20 years ago i could have never got my students to do something like that tell them okay i want you to take this text go home study it listen to it choose an accent that you want to listen to it in and here is some a word war activity to do afterwards to check your understanding now if we want to com combine this OK, let me just come make just sure that we're, we're sharing this all nice and clearly. Um, let me go back to ChatGPT. OK, and we'll just open a new chat. And I'm going to ask ChatGPT really quickly. OK. Um, ChatGPT, can you write me a very short story about a young boy who dreamt of becoming a professional footballer and eventually got um, the chance to practice and play with Chelsea. But in the end, he decided it was too much hard work and he decided he didn't want to make the sacrifice. Can you make the level of the story about A to B1 in English, please? OK. OK, off it goes. It's going to write me a nice story. OK, this is the sort of thing. All right. So imagine that you might this might be something that you could do with your students. So you've been teaching them about the topic of football in the class. You've been practicing vocabulary. And then you tell them, right, guys, this is the story that I want you to listen to. I want you to learn because we're going to be talking about this story in the next lesson. And when you go home, you might want to listen to this story. You can use chat. You can use natural readers. So I'm going to copy that story. OK, I'm just going to copy it. So I'm a student. I've got that story. I go. I open up natural readers. I don't even need to sign in. Absolutely fantastic. I paste that story in. I choose the speaker that I want. So I'm going to have English, but we're going to choose a different one. Let's do this time. Let's do um, let's do Welsh English accent. We've only got one accent. We've only got one voice in Welsh English, but that will do. And let's just see how we get on with this new story that ChatGPT has written for me. Um, the level looks a bit higher for me. I'd probably have to ask ChatGPT to go back and make that story a little bit easier. But anyway, let's just see. Once upon a time in a small town, there lived a young boy named Jake. From a very young age, Jake dreamt of becoming a professional footballer. His room was adorned with posters of his favourite players, and he spent countless hours practising in the local park. OK, so you can see now you can just see how powerful this technology is and how useful it is. And look, guys, how many languages you can use this for. And it's completely free. OK, completely free. Dutch, French, German, Hebrew. And whoa, it's got Polish. So it's brilliant for me. I'm using this technology every day. I've not even signed up for an account. Um, there's no need for me to sign up and pay. I can use up to 4000 characters a day for free i can hear text read out in perfect or almost perfect sounding native voices absolutely brilliant for me when i'm working in language learning and a great technology to show to our teachers and a great text to show to our students and a great technology to facilitate their studying outside of the class, okay, to make the activities that you ask them to do for homework even more interesting. They, for homework, for example, could even write a little story and then come in class and the rest of the class could listen to the student's story. You could take the example stories, paste them into natural readers and let the rest of the class listen to them. There are so many ways you can use this technology. I'm using it every day. Let's say you want to practice pronunciation. Let's say I've got a few words, accommodation. Let's just put in a fragile, uh, frankly. Let's put in photograph, yeah? Great for, pro yeah, photo, <coughs> photographer. Okay, let's say that I want to practice, you know, I've got some problematic words. I don't know how to pronounce. Then I can put them into natural readers, I can click, I can choose. Let's This time, let's go over to American English. Let's choose the person. We'll do work with Jane. 
And now I can listen to Jane. Hopefully she's going to read these words out nice and clearly for me. Incredibly, I can even slow it down a little bit if I don't want to hear it at 100 mile an hour. Yeah, Alan's saying today, for example, that I speak too quickly when I'm, I'm uh, 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 presenting. You can always slow the, the speed of it down a little bit, okay? So I'm going to slow it down. Don't slow it down too much. It doesn't sound natural. Let's just see what how that works. Is this good for pronunciation practice? Accommodation. Accommodation. Fragile. Fragile. Frankly. Frankly. Photograph. Photograph. Photo. Photo. Photographer. Photographer. And it even got the change of stress in the right place. What an amazing tool to show to our students to help them in terms of their language learning and facilitate what they do. You could use this in class, but for me, it's really about showing this to the students and getting them to use this technology it can really facilitate their language learning. I'm a great believer in listening and reading at the same time. OK, now I forgot to tell everybody and I'll just let you know that. Yeah. Um, OK. Is that useful, guys? How does this all look? Yeah, don't worry. Listen, 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 listen. Just just been about to tell you this. I've got a handout for you at the end. OK, where all of these things that I'm showing you in the handout, there are videos where I show you how natural readers works where I show you how ChatGPT works, where I show you how Word will works, okay? That's what I do. I make videos that show the teachers how to use these technologies. And I've put them all in one handout for you, okay? So at the end, I'm gonna give you that handout, okay? But what I just want you to see is just how we can facilitate language learning through these technologies, okay? But Again, I'm making my point. I'm not suggesting really that we need to bring these technologies into the class. You may want to do that, but a lot of you may feel that really you want to keep the technology out of the class, but the technology can extend the learning outside of the classroom and make the homework a lot more interesting. Sometimes you're going to use technology in class. I think sometimes it has a role. YouTube videos definitely have a role. Sometimes games have a role as well. But I, I think um, that... Um, these technologies uh, really can facilitate language in, language learning outside of the classroom, make the homework more interesting, okay? All right, okay. Okay, oh yeah, I mean, you could use all of these technologies in other areas, it doesn't have to be language learning. Okay, guys, let me just check on you, is this useful? Yes or no? Just give me a bit of feedback in the session. Am I? Am I? Are these technologies useful for you? So far, we've looked at ChatGPT, we've looked at WordWall, we've looked at, um, We've looked at uh, natural readers so far, okay? So we've gone, we've gone for three so far. I've got lots more to show you and I'm running out of time. Let's, let's do something really active now, okay? Let's do something really active. Have you all got your telephones nearby, okay, for this next activity? Let's try it, yeah? Okay, I'm gonna show you an absolutely brilliant AI technology. Again, really gonna show you the power of how we can facilitate and make the homework part of the flipped classroom, that connection. Remember, I'm suggesting that we've got technology and non-use of technology, and we can link the two together. I like using technology sometimes in the class, but my main role for it is outside of the classroom. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna show you a brilliant technology. And the reason I'm gonna show you this one is it's just so good what you get for free. What you get for free is unbelievable. This is way better than Kahoot. It's much more generous. It does similar things, but it has the most amazing, amazing AI technology. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over now and we're gonna click here and I've got loads of pages open on the internet. Okay, so I'm just gonna close a few down just to make life a little bit easy for me. Otherwise I'm gonna get a little bit lost here. Okay, so. I'm going to open up a technology called, it's called quizzes.com. Now, I know you, some of you know it. It's another one where um, I, let me just log in again. Okay, let me just check here, guys. Okay, I think on this one, I want to log in on this account. Let me just check. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. Hang on a minute. That's a basic account. Uh, upgrade your plan. Let me see. Let me, sorry, let me just quickly... It, in fact, to, to, to be honest with you, let's do it on this because this is I've got various accounts. This one's a free one. OK, this would be good because this will show you this will show you how powerful 
this technology is. Okay, so we're going to what we what, this is very this is similar to Kahoot. You can create activities, and then you can get the students to play them. But what's really powerful is that they've added AI technology into this. Now, I know that that te AI technology is available in the free account. I have to admit, I know it's still being tested. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that it's available. So what I'm going to do is I've got two ways of using this technology. I can access videos that have already been made, or I can actually go to uh, I can actually create my own. I'm going to create a technology. I'm going to create one, okay? So I'm going to click here. And I'm going to click, what well, this is absolutely fabulous, guys. Watch this. I'm going to click on AI with AI. I'm going to make a, a, a quiz, okay? And what we're going to do, okay, let, let, let's make this really, really simple. We're going to ch choose generate from text, okay? Now, all I need to do is paste in the text, guys. So I hope you don't mind, but I'm just just to keep it really simple and also to make it kind of. I'm going to use the same text again. All right. We, we maybe would. We'll, yeah. Let's just grab this text. Okay. I could grab another bit, but just okay. It, obviously, this text could be anything. All right. Let's just make a bit little bit longer. I'm going to grab this text. I want you to see how powerful this is. So I'm just grabbing that text, and then I'm going to jump back to the AI technology. Now notice. I'm logged into the free account. I'm not using a paid technology. I'm using the free one. I'm going to paste this. If this doesn't work, I apologize because I do know that this technology is still being developed. Okay. But I'm going to paste that text in. Okay. And you can see that it's um, it's kind of, it's done it. Okay. And now I'm going to say, generate questions for me. It is going to, okay. It's going to, I'll select a grade. Okay, I don't think that's that important, but because it obviously depends on the text. I'm going to just automatic number of questions. We won't worry too much about that. I'm just going to click on generate questions. It's going to make the quiz for me. I don't have to do anything. I just paste in the text. The AI is going to do all the work. That's what I'm hoping. Let's see if it works. Click on the magic button. And I'm hoping that it's going to generate the quiz for me. Let's just see. OK, it says that it's preparing. OK, so I haven't got to do anything. I can just sit here and drink my cup of tea. And I'm hoping it's going to generate a whole quiz for me that I could use in the class. Now, this could be interesting, couldn't it? I could have got my students to read the text for homework and then do this activity. I could set this for homework, OK? Or I could do this in the classroom if I wanted, all right? So I'm just having a quick look here. And I think that that's all right. Let's just see how many questions it's made. And let me just check if it got the right answers right or wrong. So I've got five questions. Russell Stannard's website. Okay, correct. It's put the right answer. Next one, the number of subscribers. That's correct. The next one, da, 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 use of IT. That's correct. Next one, what's the focus of da, 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 both inside and outside the classroom. Okay, good. Next one, Norwich Institute for Language Education. Okay, okay. I've made that quiz in literally seconds. Now, let's play the quiz together, guys. Guys, let's play it. I'm going to click on Publish. Okay, and now I could set this for homework, and it will just give me a link, and i give the, the link to the students. So we could do some reading work on Russell Stannard. Sorry it's about me, but it just makes life easy. Re do some, you know, re whatever we've read about in the class, and then this could be the homework. Now, today, obviously, I want you to experience what, what would the students have to do. I'm going to actually do this live, okay? So what I want you to do, I'm going to do now. Remember, I didn't make anything. I didn't do anything. Okay, I'm just going to click on Start Live Quiz. Classic. Okay, I'm going to just do Classic. I'm not going to set anything. I'm just going to click on Continue. And the game is now ready. Now, guys, get your telephones ready. I want you to simply open up your phone and point at this and then you'll have to put in your name and you'll be able to join, okay? So can I get you to just do that? Hopefully, you should be able to automatically, okay? And I can hear the first people coming in already. The first person's already logged in, one person. Two people have logged in, three people have logged in. So everyone, just point your telephone. Remember, I didn't make this quiz, okay? It was just made for me i just pasted in the text and told quizzes and remember we're using the free tool i didn't pay for this um at all i'm using the free tool 
I want you to see that I could set this for homework. I could have asked the students to read an article for homework and then do this quiz. Or we could have been doing something in the class. And then for homework, the student's going to do this activity, OK? You can do this activity online with your computer or with your telephone, OK? Just all you need to do, guys, is point your telephone at the screen with your camera, and it should open up and you will be able to play this game, okay? I'm gonna give you, I've only got 30 people in the room at the moment. Come on guys, let's get more of you in. I will give you the option as well to, to join in a minute. I'll give you the link in case some of you haven't got your telephones with you or haven't got the right access on your telephones. I can see lots of people coming in. There's slowly more and more people coming into the room, but there's still only 37 of you in the room and we got quite a few hundred people online. Just grab your phone, open up the camera and point it at the screen and it should open. Now, what I'm just going to do, just for those people that can't do that, I'm going to give you a second way of logging in. I'm just going to close that down and I'll open it again in a minute, okay? If you um, want to, I can just grab on the, I'm just going to grab this copy, the link here. I'm going to just quickly go back. I'm going to stop sharing. I'll come back and share again. In the chat window, I'm just sharing the link, guys. You can also click on the link and join just using that link, okay? So if you want to, you can just click on that link and also join just using your computer. But you've got the option, if you want to, of joining using your phone. Just going to give you a couple more minutes, okay? Click on share. Okay, we've slowly got more and more people coming into the room. Absolutely brilliant. We're up to 62, 65. Quickly, 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 I'm going to give you two more minutes because I've still got one more technology that I want to show you and we're running out of time. When I get to 100, I'm going to start playing the game. That means 30% of you will be in the room. There's still 310 people in the room, though. So it would be lovely if we get a few more in. Okay, let me open up the code again, just in case any of you haven't got the code, just point your telephone and turn on the camera and you can log in. Point your telephone, turn on the camera and you can log in. If you want to do it that way, it's possible. So you can either log in on your telephone or log in on the internet, both ways, okay? Right, let's, still got a few people coming in, give you five more seconds. One, two, three, four. Five. OK, so let's close that down. Let's start playing the game. Good luck. Let's see who can who can answer the questions the fastest. There's only five questions. Remember, I didn't even make this quiz. It was all done for me by the AI. I just pasted in the text and let the AI do the work. I did check it. It was all correct. Here we go, guys.
okay, so there it is. You just played that game. That could be the homework for the students. Who was the winner? The winner was Hoodia. I hope I'm spelling your name correct or pronouncing your name wrong. Zulfa came in second and AP came in third. Uh, the most important thing is the data that it gives me afterwards. It gives me a complete breakdown, okay? Some people got 100%. Whoa, okay? Now, I can actually look now and go to the questions and see, well, are there any questions that students had problems with? Look, 36 people got the first question correct, so maybe I need to teach that again. This question, more people answered correctly, so maybe there's no problem with that one. Nearly everyone got that one right, so that's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so it gives me loads of data on if the students are following me. So this could be an activity that the students do for homework. Okay, we might have done an activity in the class. We're trying to connect the lesson together, connect the two parts of the lesson together. And that's a free tool. And you can see it works like quizzes, but uh, like Kahu, but the di difference is there's no limit. You can have loads and loads of students. I am using a free account. I do have a paid account, but I was actually using a free account. Okay, so. Listen, uh, I'm going to just stop at this time because we're really zooming through and I'm sure there's lots of questions. There was actually a few more technologies that I was going to show you um, just really quickly before we just end and get Alan. So my website is teachertrainingvideos.com. OK, and I make videos to help teachers use technology and all my videos are free. They're all on YouTube. So one thing you can do is always is just to simply go to YouTube. OK, now what I'm going to do is I've got a handout for you where all of the technologies that I've shown you today. OK, I'm just going to quickly show it to you. They're all here. So if I just quickly click over to my settings, OK, you'll see that when you get when you email me in a minute, this is what you're going to get. There's a video to show you how to use natural readers. There's a video to show you how to use TWI. Now, I haven't had time to show you TWI, but it's a really good technology. There's a video to show you how to use ChatGPT. There's a video to show you how to use WordWall. And I've put in a video on how, how to use Padlet, because it's the latest video that I've made. And that is a great, another great technology and really good, again, for blended learning. Now, one last thing I'm going to do before I give you this is I'm going to put in a video on how to use quizzes because quizzes, I've just showed you it. I wasn't necessarily sure that I, I was going to use quizzes today, but I decided when I saw um, that not so many people seem to know what the quizzes technology, the reason I particularly chose quizzes is because it gives you so much for the free technology. So I'm just going to jump over here and I'm just going to write in quizzes and quickly grab the video on quizzes here. Look, check students understanding, all right? So that you've also got this video as here as well, all right? And I'm just gonna put that in. If you're looking to build okay, exercises. So the, all these videos will take you through step by step on exactly how to use these technologies, okay? And that's the idea of today's session, okay? Remember though, it's about linking. So when you get this handout, when you get this handout from me now, OK, then and I'm just going to save that. Now, how do you get that handout? Well, all you need to do, and we'll stop sharing. Hopefully, Alan will come back onto the screen. Is just email me at any moment. This is all automatic. You're not signing up to anything. If you want to sign up to my newsletter, you can. This is no this. This is simply an automated system. Just email Russell handout at Gmail dot com. You can do it even now. Just click on. Russell, I just email russellhandout at gmail.com and it should come straight back to you. It will it will come back in the automatic, automatic return. If you open it, you'll see that the handout's there. OK, if you want to try and do that very quickly. OK, then just put just Russell handout. I'll put it in again into the screen. Russell handout, Russell handout. OK, at gmail.com and you should automatically Immediately you email me, it will come back in the automatic reply. It will come with all the videos of all the different technologies um, that um, I've shown you today. OK, I really hope that was useful. Alan, we've got a couple of minutes left. We haven't got very long. I don't know if you want to come online and if we got any questions. Sorry that I took so long, but I was getting really engaged there, as I always do, as you know. OK, was that useful? I Absolutely. And um, loads and loads of messages in the chat saying how, how useful it was. Um, the one that stood out for me was mesmerised. 
<laughs> so you you hypnotize some people. Um, really? Quite a lot of questions, actually, uh, far more than we can deal with in, in a few minutes. Um, but I have taken screenshots of the Q&A screens. Um, so what I could do is send you a little digest of unanswered questions if you wanted to, if there are any that you'd like to uh, respond to, and we could circulate those responses. Um, but just picking out a couple for now. Um, quick one, uh, ChatGPT or Bard? Uh, well, I think actually, to be honest with you, Bard is also coming up really quickly. They're all kind of improving. Um, it's very difficult to say. I've played around with Bard. It seems pretty good as well. I generally am using ChatGPT. I particularly like the voice control in ChatGPT, and I particularly okay. like the fact that I can speak to it in Spanish and French and Polish. I have to say one thing, and I think we better make this point now. Be a little bit careful with ChatGPT when it comes to grammar. It's very good at writing sentences. It's very good at writing stories. It's very good at that kind of thing. But if you're asking it to say, like, give grammar examples, make sure you check them. OK, it does do it generally quite good. But I have had a few problems in Polish, for example. We do still have to be a little bit careful with grammar when it comes to getting example content produced. OK. Yeah, that answers another question, actually, which was about proofreading. Um, yeah. Obviously, uh, something that's uh, that's necessary. Um Another quick one. Um, you've you've shown us a couple of things like gap filled uh, sentences, um, multiple choice questions. I assume that the technology is capable of handling those, generating them even. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, um, WordWall doesn't offer a multiple choice option as as a the type of game. It does lots of grouping things together um, and it's got lots of activities for, that aren't even really around formative assessment like you know doing speaking activities in the class it's got some nice activities for that um, quizzes.com does multiple choice absolutely brilliantly as you saw and it even does it without you even to do the work so yes quizzes.com would be more appropriate for multiple choice type questions than uh, word wall oh I've lost your voice um, question for me actually yeah. about Sorry, a question yeah, for me about the um, uh, the five um, opportunities you get, the five options you get with uh, WordWall. Yeah. Is it then possible, can you kind of finesse it so that you can replace one of your five with something different? No, or no. You Once you've got your five, five, lovely question, Alan. Once you've got your five questions, you're stuck with those games. So choose your five games carefully. Okay, I'm going to tell you something really naughty now. Okay, which I did for... Three or four years, signing with two different email accounts, and then you can have ten. You can have ten games, all right. And that's what I did for a long time until they eventually con contacted me. However, I'm going to make the point because they're a lovely company. As I said, I'm not a salesman. It's very cheap. It's not expensive. It's one of the one of the cheaper technologies. And the fact that you get 36 games, you might want to consider it. Okay, but yeah, you can sign in with two two email addresses. <laughs> Okay, and um, lastly, I think, um, just because we're we're bang on time, um, an interesting one, which, um, you know, we may have to wait till tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Um, any AI that is capable of producing videos um, a, as a, a, a product, as an outcome of... Yes, whatever. absolutely. It's absolutely brilliant. It's the best one. Um uh, just trying to think on my website whether or not you can actually see it right on the front page. I presume you probably can. I, 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 it's been a very popular one on my website, but or, or certainly in my YouTube videos. I'm wondering if I've got it on the front page here. Let me just have a quick look. I app the developer for English teachers. I have the, the ten YouTube videos. I cut in. Yeah. Okay. Listen, guys. If you go onto the, onto teachertrainingvideos.com, this is unbelievable, and I'm using this a lot. Uh, it's here. First video on here, four latest videos released. Look at that one. All of these are interesting videos, but that one there shows you a technology that will make a video on any subject, really high quality for free. The only problem is there will be a watermark, obviously, yeah, to say that you are using the free tool, but you can make super high quality videos even with subtitles. So if you want to make a video on a topic that you can't find a good video on, that is a technology that you can use. That's just go to teachertrainingvideos.com, go to my website and go to that video on the front page there. It's in the latest four videos released. Absolutely fantastic.
and frightening, I'm That's afraid, because um, it just just to add to that, all right, because I'm very aware of these technologies. There are floods of videos coming onto YouTube that have been made using that technology already. OK, people are making videos on all sorts of things. And of course, they can be really high quality. So there's been a massive deluge of history videos. Because you could go onto that technology and say, make me a history video about the French Revolution. Can you include the, the following things? And it will produce it. And it will be super high quality. And then people are putting these up onto YouTube and making money from them. Incredible. The world Russell, <laughs> that was absolutely um, some astonishingly powerful tools. Um, I, I think I've, you know, really caught up with with stuff I wasn't aware of. And I'm sure um, lots, lots of the teachers have as well. Um, I'm certainly going to follow up a lot of these things. I, I will remember experian response and the australian and the indian english those are gonna <laughs> stay with me definitely. they're brilliant yeah but you know i'm Wonderful. still gonna make the point you can't be a good teacher and there's no need to push lots of technology into your lessons yeah great teacher manages the lesson group work pair work make a lesson engaging yeah you're going to use a bit of video occasionally you might play a game but you know still i don't think you need to now, be bring think, that much technology into the very... class very strong distinction uh and you've made that very clearly um listen everyone i have just uh amira has um put this link in several times a number of times i've just put it in again uh if you're um wondering about how you get hold of a certificate um it's a a, a bargain you that you go, to, you click on that link and you complete a short feedback survey. And when you've done that in return, um, it automatically sends you a link to get hold of your certificate and you can enter your name uh, yourself on the certificate. So that's the way that works. Um, ah, Lovely. right. Spelling mistake noted. Thank you, Michelle. Um, okay. Right, I think that's everything for now. Uh, our next webinar in the series is coming on the 9th of February, um, and that's going to be with Andrew Walkley from the Lexical Lab talking about how to teach grammar, how to teach grammar more creatively. Um, so looking forward to that one. I'm sure that will be another um, very practical session. Thanks again, Russell. Thank you, Cheers, everybody. Guys. Don't forget, Russell Handout, russellhandout at gmail.com, automatic. It just sends you back the handout with all the videos to help you. And look at twee.com, guys. I didn't teach you it today. It's unbelievable. And okay? just, just before we go, uh, final reminder, uh, as those of you who've been to these webinars before will know, you have the opportunity um, it's not obligatory, but the chance is there if you'd like to follow it up to submit a short assignment based on the content of Russell's webinar. Um, the idea is that it should be some kind of teaching plan. Um, so it could be uh, just an idea or an activity uh, based on one of these technologies or on another technology that you're familiar with, or it could be a set of activities, a series of activities. It could be a full lesson plan. It doesn't have to be, uh, especially given what Russell said about the usefulness, the greater usefulness of um, technical resources for the homework side of the flipped classroom. Um, it could be something more extensive in the form of a kind of scheme of work, a plan for using technology at various points in a series of lessons. But it doesn't have to be very long, very substantial. Um, just recording some ideas in the in the form of some kind of teaching plan. So the opportunity is there. Uh, if you would like to take advantage of it, then please email me at this address. It's in the chat box and I've spelt it correctly. Um, and uh, I'll pass uh, any assignments on to Russell and you'll get feedback from him. Um, so that's it. Thanks again. Thank you, Russell. 
Cheers, uh, guys. Have a good Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.